everybody. This is the U.S. Grace Force podcast. I'm Doug Barry, along with my very good friend, Father Richard Heilman. And our guest tonight is Father Frank Pavone. We're thrilled to have him back on. He is only with us through audio tonight. So we've got this, this awesome picture of Father Frank there on the screen for you all to gaze upon as we discuss with Father Frank the Just Say No to Darkness, which is we're in the thick of things right now, but we're in the thick of hope as well. Before we get started, though, we want to turn everything over to God in prayer. Father Heilman, I leave this to you. Sure. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Saint Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, amen. Awesome. Thank you, Father. Father Frank, great to have you back on the show. How have you been, our friend? I have been great, uh, Doug and Father Heilman. It's so good to be with both of you. I've been doing well. Happy Easter. And Happy Easter. Uh, we are, we listen, we got a lot of light to, to send against this. Yes. Darkness, so I'm glad to be talking about this tonight. Yes. Yeah, and we, and we definitely, we thought about you specifically for this show because this is something you've been on the front lines for so many years dealing, of course, with the, one of the greatest evils that our world has faced, and that is uh, the evil of abortion. And you've been in the thick of this fight. I remember back when I was co-hosting Life on the Rock with Father Mark, and we'd get you on periodically, and we'd do events with you. We'd see you out at the West Coast Walk for Life or somewhere in the country, and you've always, always had that, right. again, that drive and that courage keep going. So we thought you'd be perfect for tonight's conversation and you know before we get rolling we want to start off and let everybody see a video clip it's just about two minutes long this is of a pastor uh a pastor arthur polowski polowski if i get that right he's in canada calgary canada and he has a, an amazing video that's gone viral and we wanted to put this in to this show tonight because he he just really kind of shows the strength and courage that we're all calling for so we're going to watch the video and then break it down so everybody Take a look at this. Please get out. Get out of this property. Immediately get out. Okay. Get out of this property immediately. Out. I don't want to hear anything. Out of this property immediately. I don't want to hear a word. Out. Out. Out of this property. Immediately until you come back with a warrant. Out! 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 Out of this property! Immediately out! Immediately go out and don't come back. Don't, I don't want to talk to you. Not a word. Out of this property. Out of this property. Immediately out. I don't care what you have to say. Out! Out! Out of this property, you Nazis! Out! Out! Gestapo is not allowed here! Immediately, Gestapo is not allowed! Out! Do you understand English? Get out of this property! Go! So go! Go! And don't come back without the warrant! Out, Nazi! Out! Out! You understand? Nazis are not welcome here. Out. And don't come back without a warrant. Do not come back without a warrant. You understand that? You're not welcome here. Nazis are not welcome here. Gestapo is not welcome here. Do not come back, you Nazi psychopaths. Unbelievable, sick, evil people. Intimidating people in a church during the Passover. You Gestapo, Nazi, communist, fascists. Don't you dare coming back here. Can you imagine those psychopaths? Passover, the holiest Christian festival in a year. And they're coming to intimidate Christians during the holiest festival? Unbelievable. What is wrong with those sick psychopaths? It's beyond. So Pastor Polowski is from Poland. And as the story goes, and this is in interviews uh, about him on in different areas of the Canadian press, 
He is from Poland. His family is from Poland. His grandparents grew up and dealt with the Nazi regime during World War II. He himself, he's, I believe, around 48 years old. He himself remembers, as he says, beatings in the streets under the communist rule in Poland when he was younger. They eventually got out of Poland, ended up in Greece, and then eventually from Greece moved to Canada. In Calgary, a lot of his ministry work has been in the streets. I mean, literally trying to feed people and care for people in the streets, especially during this virus issue that's been going on around the world. He, said, he says, I'm simply trying to keep people alive. He's received a number of tickets from the police for violating all their restrictions. Canada's getting pretty rough up there when it comes to the restrictions they've got regarding this, their protocols and all. And he's been harassed quite a bit through tickets and so forth. And eventually, when they marched into his church, he said, that's where I draw the line. No guns in my church in a situation like this where they're intimidating my people, intimidating my flock. He said, that's where I draw the line. But he's coming from the standpoint of understanding where all of this can go with regards to tyrannical efforts and dictatorship and power drunk individuals in leadership positions and where it can end up if we don't stand up, if we don't speak out, if we don't unify and, and bring this hope that God wants us to bring to the world. I'm curious, Father Frank, your take on this video and on what Pastor Pulaski did when he just basically put the foot down and said, get out of my church. He didn't even give him a chance to talk. He just said, get out. I, I, I you know, it was powerful. Uh, yeah. and, and I think it's exactly what we need. You know, it, it reminds me, there was a phone call in the midst of this long campaign when, uh, you know, so many of us were, were, were helping President Trump. And uh, I remember um, uh, the story of a phone call that he was on with some religious leaders and including some bishops. And, you know, they were, were talking ways that the administration is helping the, the church and education and whatnot. And, and, and I wasn't on the call myself. I was told, you know, the president at a certain point look, talked to all these religious leaders and he said, you know, you guys have the right positions. You're doing wonderful work. He says, but you guys got to learn how to fight. You got to learn how to <laughs> fight. Great things that the president, uh, President Trump has done for this whole country, really. He has shown us how to fight for our uh, convictions, for our beliefs, for our positions. And this, this uh, minister, this pastor, boy, oh boy. I mean, he, you know, one of the reasons this is going viral is that he is expressing, he is showing what is bubbling up inside the minds and hearts and souls and bodies of so many people who are on so many different levels with this, this feeling of just being oppressed. We're oppressed by the culture of death, radical pro-abortion policies, and then this controlling uh, spirit on the part of some, using the pandemic as an excuse, a controlling spirit that is just offensive to not only religious freedom, it's offensive to freedom, period. You know, and, and, and the many Americans are saying, hey, wait a minute, we are a, we are a free people. And, uh, you know, we're not going to be told, you know, what we can wear and what we can do and who, how many people we can have in our house. And, uh, you know, one, one, one silver lining to all this, and it's kind of ironic, you know, uh, during this pandemic, the left has finally um, uh, realized that you can't just do what you want with your body. Uh, you know, they're the ones telling us, oh, you know, I don't care if you don't like wearing a mask, you've got to wear a mask because lives are at stake. It's like, well, hey, folks, we've been, we've been trying to tell you for decades, you know, you can't just do whatever you want with your body if lives are at stake. But, but the other side has taken it way too far now, and uh, it is a matter of freedom. So this, this pastor has struck a chord, and uh, I think it's just, it's just going to continue to resonate. I, I think it, it went viral, be, and, and I watched all the comments, too, that came in with, underneath this video, and Everybody was just like, you know, celebrating, you know, this is just as what we, this is just what we need is, was the common, you know, one shape or another was, they were saying the same thing. Well, why are they saying that? You know, this, this past year, uh, Father Frank, you know, I, uh, a lot of us have spoken up against, and, and here's what I see it as, is a tyranny. There's a tyranny that's coming in. This is different than two combating political parties. This changed. And for me, I saw it change back in 2015, where all of a sudden, you know, we were told that 
marriage can mean anything, you know, right? And you're like, right, wait, what? Right. wait, wait, what, what, what are you, what are you saying? You know, and then all of a sudden, you know, this, uh, this socialism in the form of healthcare came in and, you know, what, what that does is it takes away our freedoms and all of a sudden you're, you're telling, you know, nuns that they should uh, allow people to use abortivacients and, and, and contraception and that, and you will sit down and you will shut up and, and you're like, wait, what, what? So this is different. And there's, there's some of us that have been like this pastor, you know, sounding the alarm bells and saying, no, 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 we don't want to go in that direction. And so when you have the police and God love them, I, I, I was kind of, I was mixed emotions when I saw that video because I love the police so much, but they're being right. told what to do. Look at all, look at the riots that went on last summer. They were told to stand down, you know, and while everybody mm -hmm, said to mm -hmm. fund the police and, you know, and all this stuff, and, and uh, they were being maligned all last summer, those poor police. But here, you know, I'm sure the higher ups said, get in there and, and shut her down. And uh, but they but they didn't have a warrant, and that, that's what this is all about. If you notice the video, the pastor says, "You if you come, you come with a warrant. You know, you just don't come in here and bully us." And that's where this is going. But see, uh, this is Father Frank. This is what I've been saying all along: is that this is different. And I recently I wrote an article about growing up being a Kennedy Catholic, and back then, you know, the Democratic Party was the party of the working class and. You know, all the devout Catholics, you know, like, and because why? There wasn't bullying. You know, there wasn't, there wasn't right. a mob. Uh, there, there, there wasn't uh, people, you know, uh, uh, you know, trying to, to tell you to sit down and shut up at that time. You know, there was, there was a conversation about the direction that the, the, the country should go. This is different. This is completely is. different. And, and so, it, the, the, and, and, and a lot of people across this nation and, and they're in Canada too, are saying, um, you know, it, it, we wanted to believe it wasn't going in that direction. We gave you some benefit of the doubt, but we see it's going in that direction. Uh, a communist, a Nazi, a rule, a, a gangster uh, rule. That's what this, I keep saying, this is like, exactly like, uh, an, an organized crime syndicate. They're in league with each other. Media, Hollywood, big tech, you know, universities, public schools, they're all in league with each other and they won't, they're so united. You know, they're an organized syndicate right now. And so again, this is different. And I think you have a lot of people in spiritual leadership that can continue to fool themselves that this is just yes. combating you know, political parties, like it was when, when Kennedy was here, you know, that's all it is. And that's in the meantime, right. they're threatening us, you know, and they're gangsters, they're bullying us, uh, they're telling us to shit down, sit down and shut up, or else, you know, and, mm -hmm, and I've been, mm -hmm. I uh, w was one of those that sounded the alarms, and, you know, I, w I, you know, I was canceled in some areas, because, again, that's what gangsters do, the, you know, they, they get, uh, they either do it directly, or they, they, uh, threaten my superiors uh, you know that that uh you know get get him to sit down and shut up and, and basically right, because the right. gangsters are coming in and you will comply you know am i am i a madman or you know do I, is, is, <laughs> is, that, is that what's going on here because I I, I I i believe that's what's going on father Yes, I have been speaking the same language. I've been conveying the same message. You know, a lot of times we, we're, we're used to saying in the church and in our society, well, you know, these other people disagree with us. They mean well, but they have a different view of things or a different way of yeah. getting there. Listen, it, it's time to stop and realize something. They do not mean well. Yeah. They do not. We have a whole array of forces out there who want to destroy the freedom of the church. They want to destroy our values. They want to destroy our country. There are, they, are, they do not mean well. And, yeah. when, and when you're faced with that, then you, you have to take a different approach. This is no longer, uh, oh, let's just sit down and dialogue. Now, I, I'll, you know, I'll, like, like you were saying in, in at the outset of the program, you know, I've, I've, I've spent decades on the front line of the pro-life movement, and I have a long record of dialogue. I mean, I've made friends with some of the, the top 
uh, abortion promoters uh, uh, over over the all these these decades. So I know the value of dialogue and reaching out across the aisle, so to speak. And and I've worked with leaders in the Democrat Party over the years. And but it's a different situation now. It's very different. Yeah. We are under attack. Yes. Direct, deliberate, mean spirited attack. Yep. And if we're and, you know, if we've become so soft on the inside that we don't know how to stand up now against this darkness and this evil, well, then we have become our own worst enemy. Well, and I think that point that you made earlier, Father Frank, about President Trump saying, you know, to the pastors, you need to learn how to fight. You need right. to grow a backbone. You need to you need to get the gloves off and just be able to get in there and scrap it out. I mean, this is something that that we see more and more. And I still say that people will live in this normalcy bias mindset where even though we see these reports regularly, you know, a woman in the bank in Galveston, Texas, 65 years old, is taken down by a police officer for not wearing yeah. a mask in the bank, even though she was, and I saw the video, she was walking towards the door. Yeah, she was getting a little lippy, a little mouthy, but she was, she didn't violate the law that yeah. I could see. And he just took her down. Right, right. And you've got situations yeah. like the woman at the football game of her son outside and gets tased. This was months ago. Yeah. Not having a mask on. These types of things. The, 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 the woman that was six months pregnant. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Oh, six weeks. The one in Dallas. She six was six weeks, yeah. weeks pregnant. And she was holding her one-year-old. And she comes back from communion. This is in, in the Dallas diocese. She kneels down. Oh, yeah. Just received our Lord. And the police are right there because the pastor called the police on her. I mean, in, I mean, she was on Laura Ingram even talking about this. This is the level. And we see story after story, account after account of this. And like you both said, both, both priests here, fathers, you've said, this is different now. We've got to get out of the normalcy bias. Obviously, first and foremost, our contact is spiritual battle. But we also have to have a voice. We have to... I think, Father Hyman, you were saying earlier before the, we got started here, that quote from Joshua about we need to have boots on the ground. We need to put our feet on the ground. We need to be speaking out. And I know, Father Hyman, you said you've got a couple of great things coming up that you're going to start doing now to help engage in this battle spiritually and physically. Yeah, so I think we got to start. Uh, we got to start someplace. You know what my dream is? And I'm just going to say it out loud right now. Um, and it, there was something akin to this, uh, but it was during COVID. So it wasn't, it was huge, but it wasn't as big as it could be. But uh, it was last September 26th, if I'm not mistaken, it was called The Return. And a lot of Christians got out in the nation's capital. And it was, it was like a big revival. And that was awesome. Uh, but boy, we need that right now. We need a revival. And, and we, you, know, you could try to organize this million or five million people thing, uh, and we should. Uh, I, I, I do because we're the, we're the silent majority, 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 okay? But, but we, you know, we're not as unified as the other side is, okay? And, and they become gangsters in my estimation. But they're, why, are they, why are they so organized? Because pride, you want to be with the elites, Okay, you want to be with the woke, all right? <clears throat> and also fear. If you, you know, if you leave the 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 uh, the gangster mob, uh, you know, you'll pay for it. Uh, so, but with us, it's different. We we have so many uh, individual things going on. We need to get united. I, I'm I, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it. I'm, I, I'm, it's not, I'm not leaving the Catholic Church. I could never do that. But I'm going to go over to this big box church down the road. It's called Blackhawk. And I don't even think they're open yet because of COVID. But when they open up, I'm going over there. And I'm going to probably wear my cassock. Uh, and, but I, I'm going to bring a smile like you wouldn't believe. And, and I'm just going to say, we are brothers and sisters. And we got to get united. And I, I just, I want to love on them. Uh, but you see where I'm going with this? But but here's, there's my long-winded way to say what I'm going to do in the meantime. I just put up an announcement today, earlier, that starting tomorrow morning, because the weather is cooperating now, uh, is I'm going to bring Gracie, my dog, up to the state capitol. And I'm going up there every day at noon to do a rosary walk around the capitol. And actually, it was about this time last year that I that I urged a lot of people do that. I got, I've got a w website called rosarywalk.com and I'm not trying, there's, there's no money being made. So this isn't about monetizing. It's just about trying to get people out. Let, let's reclaim surrendered ground. And here's the scripture passage you were talking about, uh, Doug. It's from uh, Joshua 1.3. It says, every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you. 
Isn't that awesome? Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you. Joshua 1.3. We need to get out and reclaim surrendered ground. We need to bring our rosaries, um, maybe even holy water if you want, but your rosaries, your prayers, your belief, your faith. And let's reclaim surrendered ground because the bullies, the uh, gangsters have, have, have moved in. And, 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 you know, this is Easter, okay? We're just days away from celebrating Easter. And, and I was saying in my Easter homily, I, I'm hearing the birds like I've never heard before. I saw a robin the other day. I said, hello, Mr. Robin. <laughs> I started talking to the bird, you know. But it, because why? Because we've been in this 13-month-long yeah. Lent, uh, this dark winter, 13-month-long dark winter. Uh, we need to break out. Well, we need and, to break out. And there's an and there's an effort, Father, and 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 I like both of you to comment on this. We we see still, you know, um, the call it the left, call it the extremists on the left. They're they're not letting go of the fear factor. No, they're reminding us we're they're talking about a fourth wave now <laughs> and a new variant. Yeah. That was just discovered in California. I mean, Father Frank, you've seen this with the you know, the evil of abortion over the years, where they constantly come back with something new, and now they've got us in this different position with the with the pandemic, scamdemic, whatever. And now they're constantly throwing this fear, and no matter what joy. I mean, I'm in Texas, and it's like a different country compared to California, New York. You're in Florida, Father Frank. You know what it's like when you've got governors who are saying, "Hey, we're opening up, we're lifting the mask mandates," and you know what? The numbers in California in, in in Texas here are dropping in the last three weeks since yes. we've opened to 100%. Father Frank, your take on this fear that they're still just shoving down our throats right now to try to not let go of whatever tyrannical power they've got. Well, you know, I think about it, you know, we've just been a, through a transition in, in, uh, in the White House. And uh, I think about, you know, the words of President Trump, the best days are ahead of us. The best is yet to come. And then the words of Biden, oh, we have the darkest days ahead of yes. us. It's like, look, as Christians, we've got to make a choice here. Are we people of hope or are we people of despair? Now, another saying comes to mind. The battle is in the mind of the enemy. We have to understand in every battle, the enemy always wants his enemy to think that, that, that he's losing. The enemy always wants his enemy to think that things are going against him, that it's worse than it actually yes. is. Mm -hmm. And so we have to decide that the enemy is not going to take our mind and not going to make us think a certain way. Right. The fact of the matter is, first of all, we have the victory in Christ in everything. Death itself has been conquered. And, and that this, 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 in large measure, I think, accounts for the, the, the approach of these two camps, if you will, when, even when it comes to the virus. We know that death is not the end of the story. We have a way of dealing with suffering that gives it meaning in the suffering of Christ. And so, you know, we're not, you know, we don't feel that we have to control death. Christ has already conquered it. And, and so there's less of a sense among us uh, among the body of Christ and the disciples of, of Jesus, there's less of a need to, to, to be so controlling. And, you know, God forbid, you know, a woman takes her mask off for two seconds, you know, uh, you know as if all the people around her are going to die in the next 10 minutes. It's so ridiculous. But, but we, we don't have this sense of a, of a need to control because we know that we have the victory in Christ. Uh, so the battle is in the mind of the enemy. And I think that's a big part of what's playing out here right now. Yeah, and I, I keep wanting to remind people too, you know, we're the children of light. Yes. We're the children of light. You know, yeah. and so we're our call is to bring that light to the world. And and these powers of darkness, you know, that the, the, the that are in league with the prince of this world, um, it, it is a battle. And and we gotta be courageous and we've gotta be tough. Um, but we we've gotta do it not under the rules that they follow, lie, cheat, steal, threaten bully uh that's not us but jesus did get tough too you know you root of vipers and he turned over tables uh, you know we always remind people of that but and he's the son of god he can't sin so you know righteous anger is is called for at some time like this pastor up in canada i mean you know come on we're done with this you're, you know the, the bullies get out of here gangsters get out of here that's a, he was calling nazis you know a bunch of psychopaths and again, I love I love the the uh, the uh, law law enforcement, but 
you know, they were just obeying their superior's orders. But anyway, but, uh, you know, so we're in a battle. But again, again, let's not, let's not forget, you know, when Jesus was laid in the tomb, they said, it's over, it's over, it's done. You know, let, let's, let's go home. And then all of a sudden we realize it's not over at all, okay? It's just the beginning. It's just the beginning. And so, so the brighter, what did uh, President Trump say? The brightest days are ahead of us is, Father Frank, right, I believe, right. I believe yeah. that too. I believe it too. And one of the things that's going on, and I believe it's as tough as this is of us being bullied by these gangsters right now, is that they are exposing themselves, okay? So if we can get to the next election, I think the horror is going to be revealed in that election if they don't cheat. But, you know, that's that, right. That, that, that I think of the snapback uh, from all of this bullying that we're uh, enduring right now is, is going to come. But again, I, I, I am a hopeful person. And, uh, and I, I want to notice the sound of the birds and the warmth of the air and the buds on the tree and, and the, the, that life is ahead of us. But, but, but we have to be like the martyrs, courageous, willing to die. Uh, to, to for the sake of God's will for truth, right, Father? Well, you know what? The liturgy now in this Easter season helps us right along these very same lines that we're discussing tonight, standing up, being active against the darkness, standing against evil. And what I mean is the first reading, the first reading all through the Easter season is taken from the Acts of Acts. the Apostles. So no sooner do we celebrate the fact that Jesus rose from the dead then we see, the, the, uh, I always preach, you know, there was a lot of running on Easter morning. You know, the women saw Jesus, they ran away from the tomb. Uh, the disciples heard this, they ran towards the tomb. And then we see the apostles and the disciples running to, throughout the whole known world, uh, uh, preaching the gospel until the, until the end of their lives. So now we have the whole Easter season is going to be shaped by the acts of the apostles. Notice, it's not the meditations of the apostles. The, the, the thoughts of the apostles, you know, in the reflections of the apostles. No, it's the acts, the acts right. of the apostles. And right. these men go out with the boldness, with the courage against incredible odds, ready to give their lives. This sets the tone beautifully for right. showing, hey, we've won a victory. Christ has given us a victory. I always say to pro-life activists, we're not just working for victory. We are working from victory. Victory is our starting point. Yes. And that's why now we enter into a season of great vigor. I also share the hope you mentioned about, you know, the midterm elections. We have got to be very uh, active now um, exposing I, I, what you said, Father, reminded me of Paul's uh, words to the Ephesians, have nothing to do with the fruitless works of darkness, but rather expose them. That is a very practical guideline for all these different activities. And as we go on here, I'll mention one in particular that's on the horizon um, in terms of our, our federal government. But, but exposing the extremism of the other side is, is, a, is, a, is a key principle that can guide a lot of our projects and a lot of our activities. Because the, 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 our enemies that we've been speaking about, people on the left, there are various ways of describing them, um, but they are way, way outside the mainstream of America, that silent majority you right. mentioned. Because they are so far outside the mainstream, again, the battle's in the mind of the enemy. They want us to think that they have, you know, they're so much stronger than they actually are, but more numerous than they actually are. But when we expose their extremism, um, you know, people reject it. I'm very, very confident. That in the midterm elections, and we've got to we've got to consider it election season already. I mean, it's like it never ends now. It's always election season. But but that's not a bad thing because um, history's on our side. You know that when there's a change in the presidency, the president's par party usually does quite badly in the midterm in the first midterms uh, of his of his term. So the point is, we stand, and right now they're very very slim slim. Uh, majorities in the Congress for the Democrats, both in the House and the Senate is 50-50. So we stand in a very good position now to gain back both the House and the Senate. And that means that the extreme agenda is stopped in its tracks, you know, and, uh, and I think that's going to happen. And it's going to happen very, very dramatically because now they've lost all control and they've, lost, they've thrown away all pretense. And they're going to such extremes and everything that the American people, I think, are waking up. 
Now, Father Frank, I'm curious your thoughts on if Washington, D.C. is made a state, and they've talked about Puerto Rico becoming a state, that that would make things very lopsided. Do you still think we have a chance, a strong chance, even if that happens, of being able to overtake? Yes, yes. But I, but I, I, I think, too, that we're, we're going to be able to stop a lot of these proposals. Um, uh, you know, I mean, they, they theoretically... Oh, yeah, they would love this because it would give them automatically, you know, two, four more, you know, Democrat senators and they, they get a strong majority there. But, but still, uh, you know, uh, the people are still not with them doing these maneuvers. You know, this is where the filibuster is very important. Here we got to a very, very practical thing. People need to be communicating with their senators that the filibuster, which, of course, just in a nutshell, means it takes 60 votes to really get anything done in the Senate in terms of legislation. So any of these proposals is not enough to have 51 senators, you know, 50 Democrat senators plus the vice president, not enough to have that. You've got to have 60 and that's built in there for a good reason. I mean, everybody, you know, loves the filibuster when they're in the minority, they hate it when they're in the majority. But the, but the fact of the matter is that um, what it does is it assures um, us that uh, we're not going to be going from election to election, you know, bouncing back and forth between the policies that have half the country outraged at any given time. We need to build more of a consensus uh, before we're going to institute something by law. And we can't have just a one party system in America. It's not it's because it's not where America is at. It, 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 it isn't, you know, you know, always going to have half the country, uh, just not just disagreeing, but enraged, as I think we're experiencing now. So a lot of these things can be blocked, you know, if the filibuster stays in place, which I think it will, um, the, the, the other side is simply not going to have the votes to do a lot of these measures. They pass, a lot of these things pass the House. It's easier to pass things in the House. The Senate is deliberately much more complicated uh, and harder to pass things. So I think that's one of the saving, one of the saving factors here. Right. And, and yeah, Father, I, if go I, ahead. One just quick follow-up on this, Father, uh, is um, it was earlier, either before we started recording or at the very beginning, I think, you were talked about even, I think it was before, because both of you were talking about, from the perspective of our you know, religious leaders, um, we've got the, the preaching has changed or needs to change because we're not dealing with the same approach now. Um, we're we're yeah. dealing with something different now. Can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, we are. We, 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 you know, there's, been a, there's been a shift, and uh, for some reason or other, uh, so many of our religious leaders, I mean, we, are priests are, are, we as priests are often told, uh, 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 well, you know, guys, you know, don't say anything that's going to get anybody angry. Don't say anything that's going to divide God's people. Well, wait a second. First of all, <laughs> people are already divided. We're not the source of the division. And secondly, don't get anybody angry. What did we just do on Good Friday when we venerated the cross? What did we just celebrate when we, when we, when we recall the, the crucifixion of Jesus? What, and don't get anybody angry. I mean, it's a, that's a ridiculous thing to say. That's a ridiculous thing to say. Uh, uh, so, so I don't know where this is coming from, but it's not coming from a good place. And it is not, a, it's, not it's, it's, it's disastrously terrible advice. Um, we've got to have preaching that's vigorous and clear uh, and, and uh, rooted in charity, rooted in truth, rooted in, 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 uh, in faithfulness. Yeah, I, I think all the priests are charitable. I, I, you know, this, this accusation is thrown at them that, just because you're hitting a hot topic yeah. and, and, uh, and maybe you might be showing some righteous anger toward, you know, uh, guerrilla tactics that, that are going, that, that are going on, uh, mob tactics, uh, that, that you're not charitable. Well, again, did you, have you read the gospels? Have you read right. what Jesus Christ, uh, did and spoke about you, you brood of vipers, you know? And, and so, any, but I, it's funny how it made me think that earlier today, a local pastor put something up in uh, a group uh, we have on uh, Facebook, and he said, uh, has anybody else gotten a letter? He was kind of half humorous when he did it. Has anybody else got a letter that said that uh, we're leaving the parish, you know, from parishioners that we're leaving the parish, and uh, you know, we, we, we want uh, 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 electronic money giving to stop, and, and they give you an ultimatum. And, and, and I put in the comments, I said, 
Um, I think those were the people that left my parish 10 years ago and went to yours. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, but, you know, and speaking of letters, speaking of letters and mail and, and so forth, I mean, at Priests for Life, every single day, I mean, we have our, you know, our team of people that are, you know, entrusted with handing, handling correspondence. And, and I always ask them, okay, you know, tell me, you know, what kind of questions are coming in? What's the feedback we're getting? The absolutely dominant thing for months and months and months has been this utterly hurt, disappointed uh, feeling that people have, uh, and, and anger too, at the lack of leadership in the church. I mean, and we're not, we're not fostering this. We're not, and people are coming to us and they're saying, I'm hurt and I'm so disappointed and I'm anguished yeah. that, that we don't have more, uh, 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 exactly what we're calling for here tonight, more courage, more boldness, more clarity. Why are, are these are people who are saying, this is the voice of the faithful. And they're saying, you know, we, we are we are just disheartened by this, you know, and this, this is wrong, and we deserve better than this. Yeah. So that's what what people want is the is the clear, solid, strong teaching. They want to see us fighting, you know. They want to see us fighting for the freedom of the church, for the right to life, and for the for the freedoms we have in America. They want to see that. I, well, I, I want to say too to just to, to follow up on that is that um, this idea that you can't talk about hot button is issues. Mm -hmm because that will be divisive. You'll offend some snowflakes uh, or people who have bought into the dogma of the radical secularists. And, and uh, that's hogwash uh, because, yeah. uh, and I can, I can tell you that um, I, I, I think about the time uh, the, the news report came out that the eight-year-old boy, you know, decided that he was a girl. And, and mm. I, I believe the president was asked the question, should he go, you know, should, should he take the, the procedures necessary? Literally, he mutilate his body at eight years old. And he agreed with that. Now, if we talk about that, we're being political and we're being divisive uh, if we talk about that. And, and here, so you want to talk about division. Here's why we have division in our church. Because there are so many pockets of Believe, people who believe this over here, so maybe the people who believe in sodomy, the people who believe in abortion are over here. The people, and, but you know who the extremists are. You know who the fanatics are. You know who the ones that have to be put down and shut up are those that believe all of what the church teaches. That's where we're mm -hmm. at right now, and they are to be marginalized and put on the fringe because you're you're an outright fanatic if you believe all of what the church teaches. Do you see? You're extremist. You know, the dogma lives loudly in you. That's what happens <laughs> when the pastors don't preach. We are That's all right. in these pockets, and the worst of the pockets are the ones that say, "Yup, I believe everything the church teaches." You're the you're the enemy, you know, because you're yeah. you're triggering people, and and you see, what I'm saying. We need to be united, but we need to be united around the cross of Jesus Christ. That's where we need to be That's united right. with John the Beloved, who did not betray him, who did not abandon him, but who stayed with him. And st for this reason, I came into the world, he told Pontius Pilate. For this reason, I came into the world to testify to the truth. He could have said anything. Okay, that there's a reason right. he came into the world. But he said that. Now That's he's right. in camp with those extreme fanaticals who believe everything that the Bible and the church teaches. Well, people have to understand one thing. They, we should not be worried over the fact that there's division. That the fact that there is division should not bother us. Here's what we have to be worried about that we are on the right side of that division. Amen. There's always going to be division. There always was division. In fact, the Gospel of John tells us the light came into the world. People preferred darkness to light, and they ran away from the light for fear that their deeds would be exposed. And, 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 and that's the division. That's the ultimately inevitable division. In fact, I give a talk uh, uh, called God the Great Divider. Because as much as God brings us together in unity in Christ, 
He's a divider. Right. And we see it from the beginning to the end of the Bible, literally the beginning to the end. It's in the beginning, he divides the light from the darkness. He divides the waters above the heavens from the waters right. below. And there's the prophets go on and Elijah said, okay, stop straddling the fence. So if yep. the Lord is God, serve him. If Baal, serve him. And, exactly. uh, and then Jesus, I have come for division. And then at the end of time, what's he going to do? He gathers everyone before his royal throne. And scripture says he will separate them as a shepherd separates sheep from goats. So God is a divider. Why? Because it's a division between truth and, and, and error. There's a division between grace and sin. There is an eternal division between life and death. We've got to be on the right Father. side of the Amen. division. Amen. Yeah. Well, and to that point, too, he, he talks about the two roads. One is wide, one is narrow. That's a big division between roads. That's right. The, the big geographical. Yes, it is. Yeah. The cross but, or no cross. Right, right. That's right. A couple That's thoughts right. here. Um, uh, I've got on my screen here, I posted this on my Facebook page earlier. Um, CNN reports, and this happened a while back, but I just decided to throw it up uh, today, the day we record this. It's not possible to know a person's gender identity at birth. And there is no consensus criteria for assigning sex at birth. Bottom of the screen, report, you can't assign sex at birth. Does it get any more the, lunatic than that, Father Frank? That's a perfect word. The world has gone crazy. Yeah. This is lunacy. I mean, every, anything goes now. Uh, anything goes. I, I mean, the seeds of this, you know, we often quote in the pro-life movement, the uh, Planned Parenthood versus Casey decision back in 1992. The two of you know this very well, uh, where they, you know, the mystery clause, you know, everyone gets to decide for himself or herself the very meaning of human life. They said that's at the heart of freedom. No, it's not. <laughs> at the heart of freedom is the, the ability to see the truth and embrace it and live it, um, as John Paul II taught so well. So it, it's total lunacy. And, you know, I say to people, OK, so so if a person could be whatever gender uh, they desire and it, it's not based on biology, then tell me something else. Why can't they be any age that they desire? Right. That doesn't have to be based on biology either. So there's no more there's no more age limits for anything then. I mean, and you know, a six year old. Oh, I I decided that I'm 18 today. I can drive. I can vote. I can marry. I can do, do who knows what else. It, 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 this leads to utter destruction if you follow this yeah. down the, the the path where it goes. Right, it leads to total destruction and chaos. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I was in a restaurant and I told somebody that I was a 65-year-old Chinese woman. I did this. It kind of my, my wife was not so thrilled about that. Moment. But I said, I'm a 65-year-old Chinese woman. Can I get the senior citizen discount? And she looked at me like I was kind of crazy. And I looked at her with a straight face and said, I'm serious. Could you go, please go ask your manager if I can That's get how I'm self-identifying, right? It. That's yes. it. That was my point, you know? And they, and it's funny how, oh yeah, sir, you're funny. Ha ha. But that's how some people uh -huh. are actually choosing to live. And Father Frank, you mentioned something. I think this is a, an excellent statement. I want to make sure we don't forget it. The acts of the apostles. I love the yes. fact that after Jesus rose from the grave, the apostles were hiding out still. You know, and by the way, you said there was a lot of running going on. Clearly, the Lord was calling for more exercise in the time. And maybe we should be doing <laughs> yeah. running all over the place, getting in right. shape. But when you talk about the fact that these men and anybody else in that upper room were hiding in fear, and when the Holy Spirit hit them at Pentecost, those doors burst open. They went out into the streets, boots on the ground. The quote you mentioned, Father Heilman from Joshua, reclaiming the ground where their feet are, are trod, where they're, where they're walking, where they're moving. They're bringing it. They're bringing the truth. Yeah, every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, yeah. I have given to you, Joshua 1.3. That is so perfect. It lines up with Acts of the Apostles. Act. Engage. You know, uh, down here in Texas, where I am, in East Texas area, there is a sign, there are signs out in people's yards everywhere, a lot of places, that simply say, God is in control. And yes. I look at that and I say, yes, God is in, he's God at all, but he gives us free will. And so he'll allow us to make the choices that will lead to our destruction. But if we embrace that, and to cooperate with that, we can we can turn everything around. But we've got to engage, as you said, Father Frank, like the Acts of the Apostles, they went out and they did. They didn't remain inside, even though they knew that their life was on the line. And 11 of the 12, Matthias taking Judas's place, 11 of the 12 are martyred. They did it with a joy in their heart. Not all, 
of us are going to reach that point, at least maybe not red martyrdom, white martyrdom, a lot of people are experiencing that. I know, Father, both of you have, both of you fathers have experienced that. I've hit it in a few different departments as well, you know, losing some, some serious source of income over being too quote unquote political because I was basically before the election and since then challenging certain things going on, obviously about Biden and everything, because he is such a faithful, devout Catholic, though I hear he didn't even mention Jesus in uh, his Easter uh, message, if I'm not mistaken there. So anyway, that says a lot. I know it's just it, it's tragic to see where, where all this is. But my point is acts of the apostles to get out and engage. Yes. Father Frank, what's your advice to people, your encouragement because, you know, you've been engaging, obviously, all over the country, all over the world, in mean, the pro-life uh, aspect, you know, in that front line there, in that trench warfare. What's your advice to the average people out there, the everyday Joe and Jane who are just trying to get their kids back in school, they're trying to put food on the table, yet they're seeing the news reports of the threats of quarantine camps to vaccination passports to, here's this one, and I know you two both pay close attention to the news, the talk of either taxing people who don't get vaccinated a higher tax or making our freedoms associated with being vaccinated. Mm, this mm. kind of pressure. What advice, yes. Father Frank, to us being our Acts of the Apostles today? Okay, well, first of all, we have to be sober. Scripture says stay sober and alert. Not everything that is threatened against us is actually going to happen. And even right. if government officials uh, uh, try outlandish things, you know, there are still <laughs> some very effective checks and balances in our system, you know, that, that Biden might try something, Congress might try something, and, you, and yet you've got the courts that can strike certain things down and say, wait a second, this goes too far in restricting the rights of the people. So I, I think of something Mother Angelica told me when I asked her one day, uh, Mother, how do you do great things for God? And, and this is a question like, like you just were asking, Doug, and it, it comes in it, it, it comes in very practical ways. You know, how do we do great things for God? For a parent means, you know, how do I keep my children safe? How do I get them back to school? And, and all of these battles we're in. And here's what she said. She said, she said, you do this. You go through the open door that's open to you today. You take that next step uh, and you take it courageously. But she said, so many people don't take it because they think they need to see, you know, the next 50 steps after that. And exactly are all those doors open or how is this going to unfold, you know, next year or the year after that or five years or 10 years. And she said, don't get distracted by all those questions. We have to be sober and we have to say, OK, look what can I do today? What door is open to me? What little step can I make? Because ultimately, what people have to keep in mind is this. It doesn't matter how many forces are, are lined up against us. Uh, it doesn't matter, you know, how overwhelmed we, we might be. The only one thing matters, that every day we are continuing to move forward because the only way that the enemy definitively wins is if we stop moving forward uh, you know or if we say i'm not going to take any steps anymore or i got to go start going backwards no you persevere you keep just taking those little steps because one door is going to open another and a little victory is going to give you more strength to win the next victory and that is very much the i mean these are spiritual uh, uh, and psychological principles that today i think these apply more uh, than ever before. And, and one other distinction, clarity versus certainty. Uh, and I heard a business uh, coach um, uh, tell a bunch of executives this uh, one time, and it was such good advice, and I know it's helped me immensely. Uh, and what he meant was, you know, you have to have clarity about what direction you're going. And so, so many of our listeners, they know they want to raise their children in the faith. Uh, they know they want to get their children back to school. Uh, they know that, you know, they want to uh, nurture their marriage. And we know the things we want to do. We want to defend life and so forth. So we have, we always have to have a clarity. And whatever decisions we make, we have to make them uh, so that, you know, they're going in the direction of where that clarity leads us. But that doesn't mean we're always going to have certainty that the exact thing we're about to do is going to work, or, oh, this is my best option right now. It may not be the best option. There may not be any way to know whether it's the best option, but you don't need the certainty of that. 
What you need is the clarity. Okay, I'm going to try this. It might not be the best or most effective option, but is it going in the direction that I clearly know I want to go? And if you can say yes to the clarity part of it, don't mind, don't worry if there's a little bit of uncertainty. And that goes back to Mother Angelica's advice. You don't have to be certain about where step A leads to B leads to C leads to D. You can't see, God doesn't let us see that far down the road, but he does let us see the next step in front of us. So take it with courage, have the clarity of what direction you're going in, and just be concerned about one thing that you keep moving every day you take a step every day you do that you can you can you can you can climb mountains you can you can tear down mountains for that matter and and that's i think uh, the spirit that we have to live in during these days i have to pick up on that because it's perfect to segue into what i want to really propose for people because a lot of people are sitting there go i don't know what to do and and i don't have that clarity and and doug you and i talked earlier today and i was ready to tell you is there, can, can we do this at another time? Because I am dead right now. And of course, it was after the Easter weekend and and, uh, and I was calling it the 13 month Lent that we went through and everything. And, and so I just crashed today. And earlier I was just like, uh, I, I can't even lift my head. And, uh, but but the one thing I realized too is that, is that I'm kind of out of shape is, is part of the problem. And that's why I made the decision tomorrow, darn it. I'm getting, uh, Gracie, we're going up to the state capitol. We're going to start doing a rosary walk. And that's the next step I'm choosing to take, Father Frank and Doug, is, is that I need, if I'm going to find that clarity, I can't be sluggish. I, my brain can't be fogged up. You know, I can't be, you know, physically, you know, uh, down. Uh, because when you're, when, you're, when you're more physically fit, you know, the, the blood's flowing better. And the thoughts are flowing better. And, and the other thing is I'm going to be praying the rosary with purpose. I am reclaiming that surrendered ground with that quote from Joshua. You know, that, that every, every, so the next step I'm take, I'm going to get out in the sunshine. I'm going to get that vitamin D. I'm going to grab my combat rosary. And, and, and I'm going to reclaim surrendered ground. And I'm going to get this circulation going better in, inside of me and get the, the circulation going better here. And I'm going to be more motivated to want to do something for the kingdom, right? If I'm, if yes, I'm, yes. If, if I'm, if I'm, you know, sluggish and, you know, and, and just sitting there going, oh, geez, I don't know what to do. Okay, I'll grab another cookie. You know, <laughs> I mean, the, the, a lot of us are in that place where the only decision yep. we make is to, to grab the, on the next cookie because of that place. So, again, that's why I started last year. I started last year at this time. And then COVID kind of, you know, vanquished it for a while. I'm re, re, I'm bringing it back, but it's called rosarywalk.com. All right, rosarywalk.com. But go to the website because, again, nobody's making any money in this. It's just a, an effort to get everybody out walking, reclaim and surrender ground. But you can actually, right on the front page, you can put your name and address or your, just your address if you want. And then we're, we got the map of the United States, and there's going to be these balloon pins of everybody who's reclaiming the ground throughout the United States, okay? It's, it's going to be great. We're, we're reclaiming the United States supernaturally. We're bringing our faith, our mm. rosary. We're bringing ourselves. And in the meantime, we're getting that blood flowing into those brain cells and those synapses are going to be fired like they never fired before. We're going to be able to, to ponder better what God wants us to do to build the kingdom of God. Amen? Yes. Amen. Amen. That's right. That's right. That's and and may I bring up also, that, that, that's great. Now those, I think, Father, those practical things, this is what people need. And if I may bring up another practical battlefront that's um, uh, going to open up here now, and just literally in the coming days. And we've all heard about it before if we've been following, you know, uh, pro-life issues especially. But I want people to understand that there's going to be an effort now in the Congress by our pro-life members to, to shine a bright light in the coming week, days and weeks on this problem we have in this country. I mean, we think about how bad, how crazy it has become, right? Babies born alive after a failed abortion. It does happen. And they don't have adequate protection. Now, there's been a bill that's been introduced uh, for, for several Congresses now to protect these babies 
And um, the, the, the Democrats and the left, they don't want to have anything to do with it. They don't even want it to come up for a debate. Uh, and so there's going to be some light sh shown on this and some maneuvers taken to force a vote on this. And, and again, it goes back to St. Paul, what we were saying before. These are all spiritual principles applied to our, to our public policy life. Expose, expose the works of darkness, expose the evil. How many people are going to vote in the midterm elections for their, you know, their congressman or woman and not even know, not even have any idea that there was even this debate, that this man, this woman was unwilling even to protect the baby outside the womb, fully born, not willing to protect them from being, Look uh, how being evil killed or neglected. Become. Look how yes, evil yes. Become. The eight-year-old can mutilate his body. You can, you can right. kill a baby outside the womb now. You know? Outside, outside, yeah. 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 And, and, and yeah. well, we should be nice and not offend anybody, and we should all get along. No, no, no. And, oh, it's, right. It's, right. Yeah. Right. Well, so, and, and, so I want to give, uh, yeah, it, 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 practically speaking, um, let me give people a simple website bornalive.us. Uh, there's all kinds of tools nice. there that they can take. Again, those simple little steps, informing themselves, watch, reading up on it, will keep them uh, posted on, on action to be Everybody taken. Communicate with your members. Bornalive.us. Again, there's simple, there's simple things we can do, right? There's simple things we can do, and that'll encourage us, right? That'll give us that energy again yep. when we start uh, start engaging the battle. Yeah. And, you know, and, and you, know, you talk Father Heilman about reclaiming and Father Frank about, you know, really, we're, 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 we need to reclaim, you know, even these areas of our politics with regards to this, this point you just brought up, this, you know, children being born after a failed abortion. What, what in the world, you know, where are we now? I mean, it, obviously, we're, we're all getting so accustomed to some of this that one of the major problems is we're becoming either desensitized or too comfortable. And one of my favorite quotes is if right. you become too comfortable, you get soft. If you get soft, you get weak. If you get weak, you can't fight. And if you can't fight, you die. You need to reclaim that strength, that grit, that willingness to be a little uncomfortable every day in some way, just spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally, so that you are sharp and you're ready to go. I mean, soldiers that are engaging in training before they go into battle don't sit around and just just relax excessively. It's not about comfort food right. and binge watching on TV. They are training to prepare to engage in a conflict in a battle somewhere. And our battles, obviously, uh, mentally, spiritually, you know, sometimes physically, we we have got to be sharper. We've got to reclaim that aspect of being a better prepared soldier for Christ in these different areas. Um, and I like what you said, Father Frank, I want to emphasize this, what Mother Angelica had said to you, is just simply take that step that you see in front of you and go. And, and maybe that step is you're inspired by something from this particular podcast to do the rosary walk that Father Heilman's talking about, to to actually take a look at, you know, the teachings of your faith, to pay attention to the, you know, what's going on politically in our world. There are a lot of people out there, and I, I'd like to maybe get both your comment on this, a lot of people who don't, they don't want to watch the news anymore. And I'm hearing people say this, I can't do anything about it, so I'm just not going to watch it because all it does is stress me out. Now, I understand we shouldn't be so consumed by it that it overwhelms us. Yes, absolutely. But if we're not at least aware of what's going on, then as you just mentioned, Father Frank, we're not aware of even this situation coming up with, you know, getting a debate on whether or not children should be allowed to live after a failed abortion. How do we turn our backs on, on not paying attention to what's going on, find the right sources of information so we can be aware of it, so we can, we can be motivated, inspired, and realize we need to be taking steps against this. Is this an important thing? At least you know, to, yeah. Can, you can, can I chime in just real quick before you, Father Frank? Because it brings to mind how I've, I've been trying to describe what a shepherd is. And a shepherd go, he goes, there's a wolf. There's a wolf over there. There's a wolf over there. you got to know the dangers that are coming. And it's not just priests and pastors. It's moms and dads, you know. The, That's you know, right. This is That's what's right. happening. This is, these are the wolves that are coming. you got to be aware of that. So, yeah, it's, it's ugly. You don't want to look at the wolves. You don't want the news, right? You don't want to look at it. But you got to know what's going on. Uh, right, Father Frank? Well, this is exactly right. And, you know, when, when Scripture urges us not to grow weary, 
this is what this is one of the things that is meant. This is what it's talking about. Not just this doesn't just mean physical tiredness. Don't grow weary. In other words, don't like feel like, OK, I'm just going to shut myself off. Right. from what's going on out there because look we have to take the steps we need to take to refresh ourselves we have to have balance in our yes. lives we have right. to do you know we have to get rest we have to eat well we have Absolutely. to exercise we have to have family time Restore. we have to do all the things that re invigorate us right but cutting ourselves off oh, i'm not going to pay attention to this anymore well you know it doesn't mean you're going to watch the news from morning to night but the point is that no you being kept informed is part of your responsibility and Absolutely. and 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 not not trying to escape from that you know that's part of you know do not grow weary this is part of what it means in practice and and also finding platforms where we can unite yeah so you know, that we can have we can have each other's back we can be a force to be reckoned with and, and I know yes. that some of those platforms can get ugly and they're not fun sometimes, mm -hmm. but, but, you know, listen, I, there's 77,000 members in the United States grace force. And that's because of those mm. platforms. We found each other mm -hmm. and we shared mm. the same common desire, you know, to, to, to bring the light of Christ into the world, to stand up against the darkness to to learn more and more to be trained in what it means to be a supernatural warrior we we all shared that common desire to be in this and to be in this fight together and it was because of those platforms and I, you see a lot of people leaving those and it's got it's like boy we could have used you you know we could have used you in the fight mm. um does that make sense and these platforms are great and you know it's it's part of the answer too when people are saying oh i'm so disappointed in my my pastor in my parish well you know what the church is not just about the parish or about the diocese there's movements within the church the holy spirit raises up gifts within the church the holy spirit starts movements within the church and and we've got to come together and using the new technologies using yes. platforms like this one uh, and, and, and those are just the, as important parts of the church as as anything else Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's key. I mean, that's one thing that I know with the comment section that I'm seeing from some of the posts I put out or the emails that I get from people. And I know both of you probably get these types of things too, where people are saying, Doug, I'm so overwhelmed by this stuff. I, I, I'm, I'm so concerned. I just don't know what to do. I'm not sleeping well, this and this and this. And my comment back is, you know, usually I'm trying to say to people, you know, like what you just said, Father Frank, I think it's perfect is, you know, you've got to find the balance. You've got to do the things that rejuvenate. You've got to know yourself well enough to know, you know, is it golf? Is it, is it weightlifting? Is it, you know, is it just, you know, you got to definitely have family time. Definitely that uh, prayer time, but there have to be physical, spiritual, emotional, psychological sort of balance and all this. Um, but going back to what we started out with this show is that the mighty power of God to know that, know that truth. And again, right now, this show is being, being um, recorded the day after Easter. I mean, we, we have every reason to believe we're a people of hope, um, but we also have to be a, a people of common sense, which says that God put us in this world and we have to, we have to cooperate with the natural aspect that God gave us in this world. And we, we've got to take these steps to join forces, build the alliances. And I'm just thrilled by this because, you know, when, when we all started doing this work, I think 31 years now I've been doing ministry work and you know, the fact that I could text you earlier today, Father Frank, and, hey, you want to be on the podcast? You bet. And within moments through technology, we're able to set all this up really within hours and get everything prepared. Here we are recording it. It's going to go out and be available throughout the world. We have, we have amazing opportunities in technology yes. to grow this army and this force to, to get the information out, encourage one another, and fight that good fight fight yep. i just think it's amazing that's right but can you imagine if saint paul or how what his reaction would have been uh if someone had sat down with him and told him what you just said we were able to do tonight i, I, I mean he would be just so uh, that's I mean, me. the, 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 right yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. exactly uh, yeah they, they would probably look at us at our time and say how come you have not conquered the world for christ you have the technology right. to get the word out to everybody on the planet, practically. Yep. Exactly. Except maybe the Amish. Well, I didn't I didn't check and see when we started, but I think we've gone uh, a good hour or so. Do you yeah, guys right know? Right an hour, yeah. Right an hour? Yeah. So, Father Frank, this has been amazing. Um, yeah, you're amazing. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for coming on. 
I think there is a lot of hope. Um, like you there said, is. we're right after Easter. Uh, do you want to give us some closing comments and maybe a final blessing, Father? Yes, yes. Well, the victory is ours. You know, Easter and the, uh, what we've been through in Holy Week and everything, I always remind people, we are not just observers here. We are not just historians. Neither even are we just taking a good example from Jesus. No, it's much more than that. We are participants in this. We have died in Christ. We are raised already in the spirit. We are sharing eternal life even now. Christ is in us. We are his living body. And, and so that's the source of our hope. Easter is about we're celebrating a victory that Jesus has given to us. So let's be uh, uh, inspired and encouraged by that. And, uh, and, and yes, let's invoke the Lord's blessing. Now may the risen Christ who breathed on his apostles, who breathes on the whole world to bring order out of chaos, just as the breath of the spirit did at the outset of creation, descend upon each of us, upon our families. Uh, may he ease our, 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 our anxieties. Uh, may he awaken our spirits. May he give us courage to go into battle, stand against the darkness, confront the evil, and proclaim the victory in the risen Christ in whose mighty name we pray. And may he bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Awesome. You're amazing, Father. We love you. you. Father. <laughs> oh, you guys are an inspiration. Thank you so much. Always I, good to be with you. I'm going to raise you up at tomorrow morning's Mass, okay? I will, I will do likewise. All right. God bless, God bless you. Father. Thank you so much. It was great. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Thank you.